Hi, Emily. Uh, wait, I should do something like, hello, everybody. Today, I am so thankful to be joined by Emily Hiamstra. She is a real life viola mom slash composer. And something that I really admire about Emily is that she always is outside the box and is not afraid to p- take on all these different hats and is like the well-rounded musician that I think we all aspire to be. <laughs> oh, thanks, so, Ron. That's so welcome, kind. Welcome, <laughs> Emily. Welcome to the channel. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Cool. So recently you wrote a guest blog on my blog and you guys can check that out. It is in the link in the description below. And it was all about this competition that you started. You put out a call for scores. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. So um, I work in Toronto as a freelance violist, um, which is in everything that entails. So teaching, um, theoretically playing with orchestras and chamber groups and, and all that good stuff. Um, but I'm also a composer and arranger. And um, especially during COVID right now, um, in this dry spell, in this season where there hasn't been any work, um, I noticed that I was coming back and playing a lot of solo music that I hadn't played in a long time. Um, I hit my bucket list of I have performed all of the Bach cello suites um, and memorized them. So that was big. I had number four, it was the one left. So I got that one under my belt and realized that there was this whole world of solo music that a first of all I hadn't really explored as a um, student in school because you were always you know told to play the concertos play the chamber music which I love Um, but in the season of isolation from other musicians I wanted to do something that was good for my soul as a violist but also as a composer and I kind of put composition uh, to the side for a little bit but it never quite could stay there and kept mm-hmm. wanting to come out. As a mom, I have two kids. I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. Um, so as a violist and as a mom, I've been maybe a little bit disconnected from the composition community. So I wanted to find a way to see what everyone else is doing out there, different styles that I may not have um, thought about or considered before. I think I'm a much different composer than, oh gosh, eight years ago when I did my yeah, undergrad. Of course. Um, so yeah, I want to see what's And a there. different player, I bet, also, right? Definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Different player, too. So I wanted to see what was out there, what I could learn. The audition and competition circuit is really tiresome, and it can feel really discouraging after a while, not being able to understand why you've been rejected from something. Um, and last year, while on my second mat leave, I updated my resume, which felt like a good start. But I knew there was more. And so this was kind of a perfect opportunity to work on all those things. So um, just for everyone watching, the big goal of this conversation is for you as viewers to learn what it takes and how you can improve your application for anything, right? So if you're applying for maybe a a competition um, or for grad school, uh, undergrad, I have a lot of people who are subscribed to this channel who are in high school and are in the midst of probably just about to receive their um, college admission results or they just got in somewhere and that's fantastic but there's going to be lots of uh, people who are juniors right now and they're applying to colleges and they might have to submit pre-screening and stuff like that so this is like I felt like a great way to like have someone who has judged this like big competition you had just shy of 80 uh, applicants Mm -hmm. Um, so what do you think really made someone stand out just right away? Yeah, there were a couple big things. Um, the first one being having a really great website and online presence. I noticed through this process, some of the things that I was, I was asking for were more redundant or were less important than what I thought they were initially. Um, so I asked for the people's, um, the composer's biographies when I made up the application. But I found I wasn't reading the biography on my form. I was going to their website and I wanted to see their biography on their website and how it was laid out. Now that may not be the case for everybody, but your website really is your business card. And that's that first impression. Someone's seeing your photos, they're seeing the layout, they're seeing, does it look professional? Does it look like, oh, this person had great quality headshots. Oh, this person um, had their like mom's camera in like 2002 who <laughs> did a photo. Um, yeah. And, and I was surprised at um, the variety of uh, websites out there um, and the things that made people stand out and made people different. Um, so the website was, was really, really important. Obviously, you want it to be like streamlined, professional. You don't want stuff on your website that maybe 
is less relevant, right? Like you don't want to have maybe media from a maybe a really long time ago or like, like what else did you kind of run into? The biggest no-no that I found was going to someone's website and coming away and still not understanding who they are or what they were about. Um, so having a really clear biography section, having a really clear um, artist statement for composers or artists of any genre, or if you're a multimedia artist, um, there were a lot of people applying who were painters or um, worked in um, some kind of tech media medium as well. Um, and so having a really clear vision of who you are and what sets you apart um, within that nice crisp website environment um, really made a big difference and made a really big first impression. Um, so it's almost like it's like a, a branding thing. Oh, definitely. Because right? your website is a reflection of your personal brand. If you know that stuff about you, you know what makes you special, you know what you have to offer, and you know what kind of projects you really want to focus on. That's all stuff that you can find a, a way to incorporate into your website um, to really make it, you know, pop and also to connect you with the right opportunities that you're looking for. Exactly. Yeah. You want to make it easy on the person who's searching you. I wonder what your thoughts are on having a team to help you put together an application. For example, like I, I always think whenever I'm applying for a competition or something like that, I want other people who are like in my trusted circle to like read through my artist statements, to read through my uh, resume, just, just for typos, just for content, just for formatting. Because it's important to get out of just your own head of how you perceive things. And like, you're being judged by someone who you don't know, most likely. When you have this external people who are, you know, your close friends to like listen to a recording and be like, actually, I like this take better. Or like, maybe this is a piece you should submit and this one's maybe one you shouldn't. Um, just to get that really honest opinion, you know, from teachers or really close friends or studio mates. Oh, wait, definitely. Wait. Yeah, no, that's, um, I've actually, that's something that I've been trying to utilize a lot more in the last year or so, um, finding individuals who work in marketing or who have an inside scoop with the particular festivals or just even are kind of in that, in that world, um, but yeah. find people who know what a panel might be looking for, or like you said, um, might help you understand what you want to convey in a better sense. So you might be thinking that you're saying it in a really clear and concise way, but there might actually be a better way that's easier or might know who you're applying for and might say, actually, you should highlight this instead of this because that'll make that's catering more to what they want. You're also like very active on social media. Can you tell us a little bit about that journey? <laughs> I would love to. Um, well, first of all, I think I have to do a shameless plug for you, Ron, because um, I took your course back in, oh gosh, was that November? And I thought I knew things about social media and I did not know anything about social media. <laughs> I had done some other groups where they could maybe give some backstory. Um, I had been kind of the main promoter or marketer of other um, chamber groups that I was in um, throughout my, I guess, undergrad and, and artist diploma time in school. Um, so I was pretty used to, to, you know, I think I thought at least I knew what it what it took to be a promoter for whatever group or ensemble or concert or whatever was going on um, but I had definitely learned a lot from your class um, and just realizing uh, utilizing platforms I think that's the big thing that I've I've taken is utilizing platforms or places um, in social media or just online where there are gaps and there's something that you could fill with something that's unique to you and what you have to offer. Um, and also just about the community and the consistency, really engaging with your community and being honest, but not fake. There's so many people out there that are, man, it's like, you kind of want to follow them, but you're like, you know, it's so fake. And just the way they talk, to, <laughs> they talk to all their people is fake. And, oh man, yeah. I, and the, I mean, I have, you should see my house. If you, the frame was lower than here, there's like xylophone and toys and books everywhere. So um, I'm trying Love to it. be, <laughs> I'm trying to stay away from that, but I think people really like, if you have something to offer that's genuine and real and, and different, and you can fill a void or fill a niche, it's really always your course. I can't, I can't say I, I, I was a baby before I took your course. Oh. <laughs> did you have to write essays for any of your schools? I think I did for undergrad, but that was, oh gosh, that was an embarrassing amount of time ago. So I don't <laughs> remember that. <laughs> 
I definitely, um, I remember one of my essays that I wrote for grad school mm -hmm. uh, that I actually had a great time writing. The question was that you could write about who your musical hero was and why. Mm. Um, I wrote about uh, someone who's still very near and dear to my heart, uh, Lorna McGee, who is a flutist with the uh, Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra. And at that time, when I was writing that essay, like she had just won that job and she was at UBC teaching flute uh, for many years after previously being like co-principal flute in the BBC uh, Symphony Orchestra. And also um, she was like on trial for like London Symphony and had like guest principal in like Chicago and like all these places. And I think what really st stuck out to me was like her perseverance through all of that is like, she went through all these different things and like finally like got to this like really big job that she was like working hard towards this whole time. And I think that that was like an essay that says a lot about me as a player, right? Is like, I also, I'm living that persistence life, you know, even though it's like hard sometimes or whatever, like I've kept going, you know, through like many obstacles, right? Mm -hmm. No, that's amazing. Yeah, in those essays, if you can think about why they're asking the question, right? Like that's, um, yeah. it's important to think through your applications from your, your judges or your adjudicators point of view. Yeah. Um, so that question, what are they looking for? So you talking about perseverance, um, which is, I mean, let's be real, that's like a skill that all musicians really, really need, um, is showing them that you are the kind of candidate that even though you may have um, trials or you may have a hard time or whatever whatever may come your way you know because I know you had that that accident as well when with mm -hmm. your jaw like it's showing them that no matter what comes like you are going to persevere and you're going to be the kind of candidate that they want so finding those um, sometimes they'll even have a list of you know qualities or what the school is all about and if you can find those and then try and write your application for those kind of questions yeah, um, absolutely you know maybe it's not the story that you would use you know when you're going to talk to your friends over coffee but you're you're catering your application towards them which is going to make them more favorable for my uh, composition competition i was accepting both uh, viola scores and proposals for new works um, so there were some people who took the time to get to know me as a composer and a musician so last year i actually released an album um, of acoustic music so i was singing and playing guitar it's on my website if you want to yeah, check it check out, out check out my <laughs> album it's on our website link is below yeah let your hearts revive um, but there was some people who had checked out my website took the time to get to know me and wrote some really cool proposals um, yeah. knowing that I sing as well, or that I have this kind of folk vibe as well. So I think taking the time to know who you're writing for, yeah. it, again, it may not, it may not guarantee. There were some people who submitted some really amazing proposals that, I mean, I only had like six spots at the end of the day, which is, yeah. it's, it's a heartbreaking choice. So, um, it doesn't mean that your music isn't good quality. It just, there, there are sometimes, especially in the music world, there are just simply too many, musicians for for spots sometimes but that idea and it just might not be the right fit at that right time too right like exactly I think it's important to touch on rejection mm -hmm. uh, right and we just talked about perseverance a second ago right and this all I think ties in yeah rejection is it's hard and it sucks and I know people feel bad about talking about it or you know oh like oh I see the list of people who got in that place and that wasn't me and her or like it's hard because you want to celebrate your friends' successes, um, but it's hard when there almost there isn't a space to talk about rejection. The one thing I, I think that is important to recognize in all of this is, well, there's two things maybe. So um, rejection from a competition or a festival or school doesn't mean that your work is not good quality. It just means like you said, Ron, that it may not be a good fit or there were just simply too many applicants. But if you know that you have put your best foot forward, if you really work hard on those essays and try and be unique and creative and showcase yourself and you've done your homework and you've asked your friends to peer review and all that good stuff, if you've done that at the end of the day, you can know, you know what, this was just not meant to be. And it sucks because I put a lot of, you know, a lot of work into this and yeah. even that cycle of learning is is really really important um, yeah it's all a growing experience right? exactly like I, I think if we try to make each application better than the last like eventually it'll lead us somewhere where we're supposed to be and maybe also, that's a too optimistic view I don't know 
no, I think that's great. Well, so I have kids, so I can't, can't escape doing some kid analogies, but um, you know, my youngest Gavin is learning how to walk right now. Um, and he falls down a lot, like a lot. We don't get everything on the first try, but, uh, and I have a whole plethora of life experience of <laughs> rejection and failure. Yes, um, as do I, as, do I. <laughs> as, as does everyone. But I think sometimes we get so focused on, and I think this is, this is maybe a problem sometimes with social media too, is that we only see the good. You know, I only celebrate mm-hmm. the, oh, I got this thing and that thing. And we don't talk about the rejection or the day-to-day routine or, oh, I just won this award. And then I got pooped on by my toddler. Like no one sees the poop, <laughs> but they all see the thing that went great. Um, <laughs> and so yes. I think, we, I do, I think we need to see those failures and those rejections and those, um, what seem like missed opportunities as spaces for growth. And, um, you know, we all learn, you know, from one-year-olds up until, um, you know, until we die, until the day we die, we're all learning yeah, and growing. Absolutely. And, um, you know, life is hard, but life is also about growth and, yeah. um, and, and change. And so I think those are really important things to keep in mind too, that a no now doesn't mean a no later. And who you are I'm- last week is different from who you are next week. Yeah. And we're also like, we can't lose sight of like, we're doing the most beautiful thing in the world is creating Mm -hmm. music, you know, Mm -hmm. and we're so lucky and privileged to be able to do that. But I did want to say one more thing that I do think that with each rejection, you still have to like, with each like button you click that says submit, like you have to treat yourself for doing that. Because every time you put yourself out there, that's bravery. And you should reward yourself for that no matter the outcome. Um, And you should be like happy and proud for the work that you did. And like we said, know that it's an opportunity for growth. But like, I always say like, you know, if I hit submit, like I'm gonna, you know, maybe have some chocolate and, you know, have a night, like buy a nice meal or something like that. Yeah, definitely. Like, why not? Especially when you put a lot of hard work into it. And I find that, you know, the bigger the competition or the application, the more brain space it takes up. And so the minute it's done, you're like, oh, it feels like when you have an exam in school and you're all done. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So definitely you got to (laughs) celebrate. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much, Emily, for taking the time to talk to us today. Talk to me, I should say. I don't know. You guys are all watching. Comment below if you have any applications that you're about to submit or you're waiting on results from, you're excited about. Definitely check out Emily and support Emily. Uh, definitely go read her blog post that's on my website and that's linked below. As well, check out her website and go follow her on Instagram. She is Emily Hamster Music on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. All of her details are going to be in the description below. Um, Thank you so much for joining us and have a great day.